Welcome to the first of a series of uploads in which we'll begin to start putting everything together. The electric football figures, the homemade cardboard and cardstock bases, and the EFHL rules that we'll be using uh, to play electric football with these teams. Now, thanks to the recent generous donation to the, the, the channel here, we now have plenty of teams for a league. And I've got one more on deck once I finish uh, painting it, which I'm going to commit several hours this weekend uh, to working on. Won't get them finished, but we'll get closer. So here's how this is going to work. Each team will have 11 players, an Iron Man squad, in which all the players will be playing on offense, defense, and special teams. There'll be, uh, in some cases, uh, lots of the same teams in the league just wearing uh, different uniforms. For example, the Steelers, I'm going to have dark jerseys, light jerseys, and my alternate color rush jerseys all different enough to be able to distinguish them if they happen to face each other in gameplay. Uh, the league will mainly consist of professional teams, but as you can see, there's going to be one, at least one uh, college team in the mix too, the Tennessee Volunteers. That's who we're going to look at today. And I went ahead and rolled up all the uh, paperwork for this squad. I think I've actually done this once in the past, but I just went ahead and, and, and did it again. Rolled the team stats, uh, determined the offensive and defensive rating for the team, and, and drew up the... Uh, player roster here, and we'll go over all this. Um, this is all in the uh, third edition EFHL rulebook, and the fourth edition is uh, pending. I'm still revising it. Now let me zoom out here a minute so I can read this paperwork through the camera. Uh, the team stats uh, fairly average, an offensive rating of 11, defensive rating of 10 for the Volunteers. Um, uh, very good wide receiver scores. And uh, pretty average running back and offensive line scores. Uh, very nice uh, defensive back score. Fairly average linebacker and defensive line score. So um, uh, clearly on offense, this team is going to be relying heavily on the quarterback's arm. And defensively, uh, uh, the team is expecting uh, a lot of passing. But remember, that's just on paper. Uh, Things can and probably will be different on the electric football field. Just because the wide receivers have a nice score in the preseason doesn't mean they're going to be uh, outstanding wide receivers throughout the year. You know how it is. Injuries, um, inability to adjust, or you know, just plain meltdowns. It can happen. But here are the details for the team. The coach is Johnny Majors. Um, uh, the home stadium is, of course, Nayland Stadium. That is an open stadium, so... Uh, uh, home games will be uh, affected by inclement weather should those arise. I've yet to uh, uh, finalize conferences and divisions in the EFHL as we uh, continue to add teams. We just don't know how many teams are going to be in the league yet. Now, this uh, team has, an, has a West Coast offensive uh, philosophy and an Eagle defensive philosophy. That doesn't mean they're going to rely on those techniques uh, through gameplay. Remember, the philosophies simply allow you to adjust your uh, offensive and defensive stats a little, fine-tune them, and uh, before you uh, finalize your offensive and defensive ratings for the preseason. Uh, the franchise player is wide receiver Alvin York, which if you're familiar with the third edition, that means that the, the wide receiver gains a plus two to his ability checks. Uh, uh, on the on the field when he's in the game. And also, as long as the uh, franchise player is healthy and per participating in the game, which with Iron Man squads will always be true, each uh, or the, uh, the team will receive one additional bonus and defensive stoppage per game. And that will hold true for every team in every game, uh, unless it's negated by uh, negative modifiers from inclement weather or other concerns. Now, something new in the 4th edition EFHL rulebook is going to be uh, uh, franchise player's special abilities. I haven't made a video on that yet. Just a, a quick sneak peek. Each franchise player, regardless of whether it's uh, offense or defense, uh, gains one uh, ability that's uh, always available as long as he's on the field playing and one ability that's a special ability that can be used once per game, which is, uh, um, you know, if you want to... Um, uh, I don't play a lot of card games, but let's use uh, Magic the Gathering as, a, as an example. That would be uh, one of those instances where you're sort of breaking the rules by, by flipping down a card that uh, 
that gives you some added advantage on the turn. That's that's really what these special abilities mirror uh, in the fourth edition rules. Uh, let's focus if we can here, folks. There we go. But here's a sneak peek. If your uh, franchise player is a wide receiver, um, in any instance where uh, that wide receiver and a defender touch the ball marker at the same time on a pass attempt, the wide receiver automatically catches it. There's no ability check required. That doesn't happen that often uh, to make that overpowered. But, you know, he's your best player on the team, and he's a skilled wide receiver. So that is uh, one of the perks of having that franchise player on your team. And the, once per game, um, the wide receiver can claim the inside route against a cornerback or any other defender uh, that you know when their helmets are side by side rather than you know easy to tell which can pivot inside or outside and that happens without uh, uh, requiring an ability check to see who has gained the inside route typically it's easy to see by sight whichever his helmet is closer to infield gains the inside route but in those instances and it happens sometimes when uh, you can't tell uh, instead of rolling dice the wide receiver automatically gains the inside route in that case one time per game all right so that's really all the information uh, other than the offensive and defensive stats there uh, of course the modifiers add up to give you your offensive rating and defensive rating that's based off a chart in the the rule book okay and none of this will be filled in until we start playing games now we'll move on to the uh, player roster here um, now of course we're having to use the alternate injury rules with Iron Man squads because every player must play every down of every game because there's no <laughs> there's no substitutes. So, um, you know, they can still get hurt and they'll be playing hurt and there will still be negative modifiers to their ability checks uh, depending on how hurt they are. But uh, in these circumstances, we uh, we boost up the, uh, the number of hit points recovered per week to three from one um, so that you're... Offensive and defensive stats aren't aren't crippled before the bye week or anything like that. In other words, with uh, the Iron Man rules, uh, injuries affect that game more so than the rest of the season. Now, in the fourth edition, I have changed the roster chart just a little. Instead of base ID number, I don't really label my bases much anymore, especially the homemade bases. Um, we've just uh, added another uh, column for further positions to be played and that's really helpful in an Iron Man squad for example uh, your wide receiver is also going to be your safety and can also be a returner or a running back if necessary so it's, it's great to be able to put all that information on the chart now there really is no depth chart when you're playing with 11 figures everyone's a starter but as we play I might think of something better to put in that column to make use out of a status of course of active for every player again I might use this column for something else along the way. Uh, of course, healthy players have 10 hit points. Now, player rating, and, you know, we talk about this in the EFHL tutorial series. Everyone on the team starts with a base of 10, and then you roll five six-sided dice and uh, add that to 10 to get the uh, starting player, player rating for each player. And then you get five discretionary points to add to one of your players to, in case you roll a low score or want to boost a key member of your squad's uh, stats. Okay, let's meet the team. We'll do this and then we'll let them run up and down the field once. Fresh batteries in the motoring, FYI. I'll try to speak up so you can hear me clearly over here. We're gonna start over here. Here's number 12, this is the quarterback and inside linebacker. Also will be serving as the kicker and the punter. This is Morgan Freeman. Uh, he has 31 player rating points, that's pretty good. Next we have the tight end. Uh, number 39, inside linebacker, also uh, a running back and the holder on special teams, Alex Haley. He has 26 player rating points. Now, that is the lowest on the team, so consider him the true freshman. Uh, next, we have number one, uh, wide receiver, uh, also the, the franchise player of the team. On defense, he'll be a safety, probably the, uh, the free safety. He's also a returner if necessary and a running back if necessary. Here's Alvin York. Weighing in with uh, 34 player rating points. Remember, 40 is the maximum you can have in preseason. After that, you can have as many as you can get, you can earn. Here's number five, the other wide receiver, uh, also the other safety, uh, a returner and a running back if necessary, um, Lester Flat. Now, here's number three, 
running back. Uh, probably the, uh, we'll have to look at his base to determine whether he's the halfback or the fullback. Also a cornerback. Uh, he can be a tight end on special packages and a returner if necessary. This is David Crockett with 29 hit points, or player rating points. And that's actually two more than the previous gentleman, which was 27. Most of these players actually have 29 or 27 uh, player rating points. Up next, the other running back, number four. Also a cornerback and a uh, returner or slot receiver if necessary. Here's Isaac Hayes with 29 player rating points. Now we move on to the uh, uh, the strong players. Here's uh, the left tackle, also uh, an outside linebacker. Uh, can be a defensive back if necessary, and a uh, defensive tackle if necessary. We have Archie Campbell with 29 player rating points. Beside him here, uh, number 82, uh, right tackle, also an outside linebacker on defense can serve as a defensive tackle or a defensive back if necessary. Jerry, the King Lawler. Uh, number 73, team captain. Uh, left guard, also a defensive end, uh, with 27 player rating points. It's Reggie White. Okay. Number 55, right guard, also a, a defensive end. Uh, with 27 player rating points, we have Albert King. And... Number 53, the center, also the nose tackle, also the long snapper. This is the uh, the, <laughs> this is the true triple threat player right here. Uh, with 32 player rating points, Cal Johnson. So there you go. There are your Tennessee volunteers for the uh, inaugural season of the EFHL. And what we'll do next is just uh, let these gentlemen run up and down the field. Okay, now we've seen these bases plenty of times before, including in a, a fairly recent upload where I've... Uh, you know, featured these Tennessee Volunteer players. I feel like these are getting better with age. And um, these are actually among some of the oldest. And that's relative. These are only a couple months old. But uh, these were some of the bases that began their careers on the paper figures and then sit in storage and uh, continued to work just fine. Um, so we're going to start here with number 12, uh, the quarterback and inside linebacker Morgan Freeman. And, uh, just going to run him up and down. Nice. Very nice. All right. Up next, our tight end, number 39. And uh, yeah, this is Alex Haley. He's also an inside linebacker on defense. Let's see how he performs. Maybe not the fastest tight end. Remember, he has the lowest player rating on the team, and that's just coincidental. I, that doesn't, that doesn't, uh, that's not congruent with the performance of the bases. That's just kind of coincidental. But uh, nice route. If you can get a base to go where you want it to. Sometimes it doesn't matter how fast it is. All right. Up next, we'll move on to our wide receivers and also our safeties. We'll start with, uh, let's see. Number one, the team franchise player, Alvin York. Uh, let's see how we do now. Uh, as you can see, the base has an inherent loop in it, which we've had to compensate for. Let's see how well he's running today. Ooh, Pretty good. Pretty good indeed. Next, number five. And folks, not all of these players will have jersey numbers. I have considered uh, uh, buying some of those uh, uh, stickers, those NFL stickers. They're only five dollars. Uh, well, that's actually actually pretty reasonable. But if they're anything like uh, you know the, the the varsity decals that come with uh, every electric football set, I'm worried they're not going to stay on. And so uh, I'm still debating that. But. Uh, we don't have to have jersey numbers on these. We can identify these by sight. So number five, uh, here's Lester Flat, wide receiver and safety. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. 
Remember, hardly ever will you be keeping the board on for 100 yards downfield. So this is just a demonstration. Right on. Okay. Really pleased with the results on these so far. Number four, running back and cornerback. Isaac Hayes. Probably going to use him as a, as a returner as well. Seems very skilled for return. <laughs> I couldn't ask for a straighter route. If I was trying to achieve that, I never could. That's just a, a nice coincidence. Okay, here's the other running back and cornerback on the team. Number three, David Crockett. said on paper the uh, running back score doesn't look good for this team but look at the results look at the performance level of the bases it doesn't matter what it says on paper it doesn't matter what the sports media has to say about your team it's all about execution okay number 82 right tackle Jerry Lawler oh dear a slight misstep see a little slower than the running backs and the uh, uh, the cornerbacks and the uh, wide receivers and safeties. Maybe even a little slower than the inside linebackers and the quarterbacks and tight ends. But he's doing all right, I think. Yeah, just a little mental error on step off. Okay. Up next, number two, Archie Campbell. Uh, this is, uh, I think, the right tackle or the left tackle. Let's see. The left tackle and also an outside linebacker. Okay. A little slow getting down the field, a little bouncy. I think we can uh, mitigate a little of that with just a little finger tweaking on the base. Not too much. I don't want him to start looping. Like that. Uh, so let's do the rear prong instead of the front prong. There we go. Let's see what kind of res result we get now. It's got an inherent loop in the base. We know that. That just made it worse. Don't like to play with these prongs too much during warm ups, so to speak, but sometimes you have to. Yeah, he's. He needs. A little fine tuning. Come on, Archie. That's better. That's much better. Oh, that's not surprising over on that side of the field, falling down like that. That is, though. Uh, that's a dead spot. He shouldn't be falling there. Okay, he just needs a little coaching. He's still performing at a at a fairly high level, so I'm pretty happy with him. Now we'll move on to the lineman. Uh, 73, this is Reggie White. Uh, I've got him in as a left guard. Uh, you know, he can be a right guard if we need him to. So here we go. He should be much slower than a lot of these. This is the team captain as well. Ooh, that's actually quite a good base. I'm going to keep him on this base because it's Reggie White. That's a pretty nice result. I'm happy with that, folks. And when I'm happy, everyone's happy. Now, number 55, uh, Albert King. This is the other guard and the other uh, uh, defensive end. A slight deviation on step off down here. Okay, yeah, I'm not too worried about deviations on the linemen because they don't have far to go. Um, they're not going to catch those receivers and those running backs anyway if they get through the line or get downfield. That's pretty good. Okay. And finally, 
Number 53, the center, the long snapper, the uh, nose tackle, is Cal Johnson. And, uh, actually a pretty good player rating score for a center. So we shouldn't see many uh, uh, foibles unless we roll snake eyes on the snap check. Alright folks, this team is ready to play. I'm happy with the bases. I'm happy with the stats. Now it's going to be challenging for the volunteers to be playing in a, in a league of professional players, but you know, I'm not limiting, I'm not excluding this team simply because they're in the NCAA. All right, well that's how this works, folks. We'll be doing this for uh, uh, every team in our league over time as I as I have time to roll up the team stats and the player rosters, and. Uh, as I get their bases ready. Stay tuned for the uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers in their home jerseys. That'll be the next squad we do. I hope this is informative. I hope it's uh, entertaining. I hope it's demonstrative. And I hope electric football coaches enjoy this sort of thing. I also hope you enjoy having Morgan Freeman as a quarterback in the electric football league as much as I do. All right, folks. Talk to you soon.